Good evening, everyone. Let's look at the word of God. Last week we had a very last week we had a very interesting verse. Matthew chapter seven. Remember? <coughs> Anyone remembers? Cannot remember. Matthew chapter seven, verses twenty one to twenty three. We were looking at the phrase where Jesus said, "Lord, eh, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, and, and shall enter the kingdom of heaven." But he who does the will of the Father, of my Father in heaven, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? If it doesn't, and then I will declare to them, I never knew you, depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. If it doesn't cause you to think about this verse, then perhaps... It is good that we think about it again. Amen. Yeah? The, word, the word of God, the Bible, is powerful. It's spirit and life. The word of God is spirit and life. Amen. Let's close our eyes and say, Speak to me, Lord. Change my life. Hey, hey, don't see. I don't hear. Everyone say, Let's close our eyes. Lift your hand, two hands like that. Speak to me, Holy Spirit, and change my life. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 to 23. So this is the verse that we have looked These are the three verses that we looked at last week. And this is a very important verse. Because what if we are the one who say, Lord, Lord, one day, the last day when we say, Lord, Lord, I have done this, I have done that. And if Jesus were to declare to us, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Maybe some of you will be, uh, will be thinking, ah, yeah, this one won't happen to me. Huh? Maybe this one you will be, you, be thinking, this is for non-Christians. Huh? Non-Christians cannot prophesy by God's name. Maybe this is not for uh, those people who don't go to church, or those who don't go to church. Lah. I come to church, I go many meetings. <laughs> those who go to many meetings, maybe they cast out demons also. So this verse should actually cause us to think hard and think deep. Last week we touched a little bit, but I have a question for you. We saw from the perspective of God, right? That the importance of doing the will of God. Then we saw the paradigm, we saw how King David possess, possessing a heart after God, a man after God's heart. Because of that, he does all the will of God. So the key to be able to appreciate what Jesus was saying here is the importance. Remember, I show you the will. You have to remember. Remember I showed you the view, the, the center of it. You can live your Christian life from the center or you can live from the spokes, one of the spokes, eh? the wheel, and you have many spokes. So some people live on the spokes and they never live from the center. So tonight we're going to look at this further. It made me think, you see, here Jesus said, many will come to me and say, Lord, Lord, I've done this and I've done that. It means that Anybody name your name is many? You don't right? Some Indian name is Maniam. No, Maniam. Maniam, right? Many. Or oh, some English name, M-A-N-N-Y. Anybody name many? Some people say, you know, Jesus calling people, eh? Some people's name are verily. So when Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say to you. So Jesus was only talking to verily. Or Valerie. Lah. So here you say, oh. Jesus said, many will say to me, eh, it's not me, I'm Albert, I'm Alex. I'm not many, you are many, your name is many. You know, anybody's name many? <laughs> no, eh? it's for everyone, okay? Don't misunderstand, or somebody will say, verily, verily, I say to you. So the verily is somebody else. So Jesus here again didn't point a name. He said, many will say to me, oh, who's the many? So I want to ask this question, how come this many, let's put, put this, Person a name, huh? Many. Not fair, but how come this many did not know? 
you agree with me? He went to the presence of Jesus. He came before the presence of Jesus. He thought that he qualified. He thought that he would have gone straight to heaven. There would be a big mansion waiting for him. There will be a golden mansion. There will be a many things, you know. Of course, there are other religions that say there are many things waiting for them if they do some things, right? So similarly, many here, the name many, hello, many, eh? M-A-N-Y, many did not know. Everyone say many, many. did not know. Did not know. Do you agree with me? Many did not know. If many knew, many would not have been caught in this situation. Do you agree with me? If many knew, if you knew, I wouldn't have gone on this basis. If I knew that, you know, if I say all these things, it won't work, I will say other things. Maybe I will say, you know, I've helped other things or I've done other things. So many did not know his state, his condition. When somebody does not know, especially many here, when a person does not know, my brother, my sister, what does it tell you and tell me? It means he or she you do not know many is a guy or girl. Let's say many is a group of people. Huh? So many can be men and women. When a person does not know, it means that a person could be blind. When I say blind, doesn't mean the physical blindness, but could be blinded in his perception, in his understanding. If he is not blind, that's it. That's why the Bible says there are people who are blinded in darkness. They cannot see, they cannot accept that Jesus is Lord. Correct? There is a blindness. There is a veil over their eyes. They cannot see, they cannot accept, they cannot believe Jesus is God. Unless the veil is removed, the veil of unbelief is removed, then it's realized, hey, now I believe, now I know. So every one of us, before we became Christians, we have this something, a covering over us. We don't believe. Jesus is God. So similarly, these people did not know their condition. Probably, with a high probability, they did not know they were blinded. Can you agree with me? What were they blinded from? Could be that they were blinded by the culture of their day. You have to think you know, you have to meditate and ponder about this. If it is not the culture of the day, that means the culture means everybody does it, he will not be so mistaken. If it is an accepted practice, if it is an accepted belief that this is the way to go to heaven, this is the way you will go to kingdom of heaven. So this group of people could be blinded by the culture of his day. Are you following me? The culture, I'm not saying just the outside world culture. He, these are Christians we are talking about. So we could be looking at a group of people who were blinded by the Christian culture of his day. Are you following me? Just because the Christian culture of that day is like that, they follow, they end up, got it wrong. Otherwise, Jesus will not be saying a small group of people will come and say, no, no. He said many. That means the majority. Many people. Sorry, it may not mean majority, but it means many people. Large group of people who have the same practice, same culture. But I'm very fair. Look at the verse. Jesus said, depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. So Jesus is saying, and I'm giving and I'm proposing and submitting to you, my brother, my sister. Could it be that this group of people were blinded by the lawless culture of that day? Okay, it's not just the normal culture, but they were blinded by the lawless culture of their day. I'll give you an example, you know. Everyone look here. I'll give you an example. Open the gate. Again, I need to be open the car goes up. Suddenly I heard a sound, knock la. Bang! Right? Right? Bang means what? A car not on something, right? Bang! Or bang! Because I was actually not in the car. I was outside trying to open the gate. Right? They were trying to push the auto gate because there was an issue with the auto gate. So, bang! I watched. Then the car 
just drove, drove past me in front of the road and then parked. And he, she, she also found out that she must have done, hit something. Right? She went a bit straight to the front, came out. Everything is good, right? Nothing wrong, right? Is there anything wrong? No. Nothing wrong, right? That's the culture of today. He had she, the driver, had just knocked on a car side mirror. I went to see the side mirror was side mirror is like that, right? It becomes like that. And the mirror broken. She didn't give a single thought about other car. She came down. It's a new MyV car. Look at my car. Any scratch or not? No scratch. Huh? Get into the car. Sped off. Brother and sister. This is the culture of today. How is my car doing? I don't care about the car. The best thing is if I can run away, nobody see me. Huh? Do you agree with me? This is the culture of today. Huh? Everybody will do that. I just bought a new car. If I hit someone, I run away. Nobody would know. Are you following me? What is that? We are living in a culture where it is very self-absorbed. I don't care. Maybe he was just put in an Instagram or Facebook today. Today I thought I am not on my car. It's all on him, herself. My car must say, huh? I'm so happy. If, if she is a Christian, she might just give a testimony. You know, she went to care group. I'm so happy today. My car, I thought, got an accident, but nothing happened. <laughs> Scary, right? The testimony is saying, oh, how God, God is so good. My car, no problem. But she just knocked on people's car. No? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> she just drove and <laughs> I heard my brother, my sister. What if the culture of the day has blinded us? What? I'm not saying things picking up plucking it from the air. Probably not many years ago, there's no such thing as selfie. No? Selfie is a new thing. What does selfie do? <laughs> what does selfie do? Selfie is self la. It has never been a concern when people invented camera to take a photo of the person himself. The purpose, the invention of camera has always been to take a photo of other people, the group. Technology is not wrong. But what is the culture of the day? Selfie. What is Instagram all about? What is social media all about? Today I add big crap, everything. Very self-absorbed. Wow, all this must let the whole world know about what happened to me. Five years ago, ten years ago, is there such a thing? It has become a very self-absorbed world. Selfie, beefy, nothing wrong. I also do that. But my brother, my sister, what is it? What is the culture of the day? It is called narcissistic. A narcissistic attitude means one that is so absorbed by the self. It comes from the word, the original word of narcissistic is that they believe there was a god or a goddess or something. They always look at himself and then he died or something like that. Is it true? You do not know. Anybody know about that story? No, he's always so absorbed by himself, himself the narcissist, yeah? narcissistic. The narcissistic attitude and behavior of the modern culture. Not wrong what? And I can bet you what I'm saying today, even some of you will challenge me. What's wrong? It's beefy only. It's selfie only. It's nothing wrong. Because we have been so immersed in the culture of the day we live in. What's wrong with that? What is lawlessness? The Bible tells us very clearly what is lawlessness. Let me just share with you. First John chapter 3, verse 4. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 4, it says, Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness. Everybody say lawlessness. lawlessness. And sin is lawlessness. So 1 John chapter 3, verse 4 tells us, Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness. 
and sin is lawlessness. So what is lawlessness? Lawlessness is sin. Whatever sin is lawlessness. So it is not restricted to anything. Lawlessness can be any sin. And in the end times, Jesus said, lawlessness will abound. Matthew chapter 24, verse 12. That means there will be so much sin. Lawlessness will abound. And the love of many will grow cold. That means in the end times, people do not know what it, what it means to love God. Their love will grow cold. And so just now when I was asking and trying to encourage all of us to offer love to Jesus during our worship, I had this image, you know, in the Bible, it was told that there was this, uh, this Pharisee who invited Jesus to his house. He didn't even bother to do anything to Jesus, but there was a woman there, remember, who washed the feet of Jesus with her hair. There was someone who appreciated Jesus. A high-ranking Pharisee thought that by having Jesus in his house, he will share some great reputation. He didn't even bother to wash the feet of Jesus. So it is a picture of the end time when there is all these people who are so absorbed about himself. It is not something new. It is just that technology has caught up with the culture of the day. Why did the Pharisee invite Jesus to his house? He was self-absorbed. So that everybody thinks, wow, this Pharisee not bad, huh? can invite Jesus to the house. Huh? This Pharisee must be very king, one, huh? very old, not bad. One. The whole motivation was for himself. So lawlessness is sin, and sin is lawlessness. Everybody say, lawlessness is sin. Lawlessness is sin. And sin is lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. But the problem, how does... You will, tell, you will tell me, hey, impossible. Lah. We are Christians, you know. Right? We are Christians. How can you and me commit something law, something law called lawlessness? And look, 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 at, look here, look here. How can you and me commit lawlessness? Right? The Christian one. Why do you commit lawlessness? Lawlessness can be any sin. But the problem is this. The blindness comes when you and I begin to take sin lightly. When you and I begin to take sin lightly, we can understand what Jesus said. He said, depart from me, I do not know you, you who practice lawlessness. When we take sin lightly. If you notice, isn't, isn't this the shift in the Christian world? Let's make the Christian meeting more palatable for all types of people. Let's make the Christian meeting seeker friendly. Why talk about sin? Talk about God's goodness. Don't focus on sin. And if you go to the extreme, they will say, Jesus has taken care of your sin now. Don't worry, you can sin. You don't need to repent. Because Jesus has died on the cross once and for all. I was once, many years ago, I attended a lunch meeting. By, there was a lunch meeting. There was a speaker, Brother Alex, good friend. Pastor Paul Ang, he was the speaker of the lunch hour meeting. Sometimes I go there just to look, many years ago, probably five, six years ago. So he was sharing something very powerful. He was talking about forgiveness, how we need to forgive. I think most of you, if you know him, you would have heard his story about forgiveness and all that. The following week, they have a weekly lunch hour meeting. The following week, a leader went up and said, I could not accept what last week's meeting was. Why do we need to even do that? We have grace. Why do we need to forgive? He was going on and on and on. Wow, I said, wow. We don't need to forgive. What need to forgive people? It's grace, I did. If sin begins to be taken lightly, lawlessness becomes more palatable to Christians. 
Why do we care so much about sin? Grace is enough. Right? The blood of Jesus. We don't even hear about the blood of Jesus. And I remember another pastor. He said he went to a big church. I don't want to say the big church like, because big, some of you also go to that church. He says he goes to the church just to accompany the children during Christmas. The pastor told me. He said, oh, very good, your Christmas gospel story. I say it's wrong, you know. Your pastor talked about a baby who will be a savior. The baby Jesus who is the savior of the world. I say it's wrong. The baby cannot save. Only a crucified Christ, blood being shed, can we can save. In the modern world is not important. We make it nice. We make it by a nice Christmas story. Baby Christmas. It's good enough. People will accept. People will become Jesus. Many people accept Jesus. In fact, many people will be converted. But what kind of Jesus do they accept? They do not know what is a Jesus who was cross crucified, blood was shed. I have to point this out to all of you. I have a responsibility to be faithful to the word of God. Because the word of God is true. Amen. Are you following me? So when you and I begin to take sin lightly, that is the time you and I are susceptible to be blinded by the culture of our day. Lawlessness can be any sin. And when you and I take sin lightly, never mind lah. It's a bad habit. It's just a character issue lah. If sin means sin. No lah, you know, you pity him last time when he was small, he's like that. You know, he, he has this background. If, if, you know, if he was born in a rich world, it's okay. Hello, sin is sin. Amen. You cannot excuse and say, oh, because of this. No, if it is sin, it is sin. The faster you and I recognize his sin, the faster we get the solution because Jesus is already the same solution. But if you, want to hide, if you and I want to hide behind, oh, this is not sin, we compromise. We do not see sin as, as it is. We begin to take sin lightly. Brother and sister, we are in the danger of being blinded by the modern culture, by the Christian culture of the day. And when we are blinded, let's not one day when we approach the kingdom of heaven in the last days, Jesus will classify and categorize us as the many. Like I told you, the many did not know. They were blinded by the culture of the day, the lawless culture of their day. It was an accepted thing. And let me tell you, this is a biblical thing. This is right from Old Testament to New Testament. If you notice carefully, this is something very real. I show you Isaiah chapter 6. We are talking about a great prophet here. Prophet Isaiah is considered a major prophet in the Bible because he wrote about, he wrote, a, the book is a big, it's a huge book with many chapters and he, the prophecies were major in nature. He prophesied about the coming Jesus. He was a prophet and he was blinded by the culture of his day. Before he before his stepped into the calling of his prophet, Isaiah chapter 6, we have looked at this a few weeks ago, but I did not want to touch on that because we can look at it again. So in Isaiah chapter 6, if you have found it, say Amen. amen. Verse 1, read with me all together. One, two, go. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. We know that, right? In the year Uzziah, King Uzziah died, who saw the Lord? Isaiah saw the Lord in the year King Uzziah died. Look with me at verse 5. You have verse 5? Everyone read verse 5. He said, Do you have it? One, two, go. So I say, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. What did he say? For the first time he realized he was blinded to the fact that he has unclean lips. And he gave us the reason why. He said, after I saw God, I seen Jesus, the revelation of Jesus, the holiness of Jesus showed his depravity, showed his condition. I am a man of unclean lips. 
Why I didn't know all this well? Because I dwell amongst what he said. Because I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. There you go. I prove to you my theory. If you dwell in a people who practice the same thing, if it is the culture of the day, everybody takes sin lightly, you and I will surely take sin lightly. Without knowing it, and when you know it, it's too late. Unless like Isaiah, he confronted, he encountered the presence of God and the presence of God gave him that revelation, hey, look at yourself, your condition, you have unclean limbs. He, he, he was shocked. I am a man of unclean lips. I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. The same culture I'm living in caused me to live the same way. Everybody is doing it. To the extent when everybody is doing it, I also do not know I will be doing it and I am doing it. Are you following me? Hello? Are you following me? Give you one, this is unclean lips. It can be many things because I say lawlessness can be anything, right? Lawlessness can be any sin. I give you another example. Let's say pride. Okay. Sometimes you hear, I give examples, not to judge people. Okay. Don't get me wrong. We don't judge, but we give examples to learn. Okay. To learn so that we learn from mistake and we change. Are you following me? Amen. Sometimes we hear God's servant, sometimes they go up on the stage, pulpit. probably I'm guilty and mistake. I'm also guilty one time or another. You go up to the stage, go up to the pulpit, you somehow say some things that somehow exalt yourself. Oh, I've done this, you know. I've preached in some conferences, I've great conferences, I've done some healing, uh, I've, uh, I've been to these nations, I'm this, uh, I've done this great thing. Please follow me closely. Hello? Please look at me closely. You've got to catch this. Hello? Everyone look here. If 10 out of 10 God's servants say that, if 10 out of 10 cell group leaders, if 10 out of 10 youth leaders all also say that you and I will never can tell a hint of pride at all. I dwell in the midst of a people who are proud and I do not know it is a proud thing. But unless unless I heard before there was one time I heard I heard a great evangelist healing evangelist, his name was Benny Hinn or I, I read Catherine Coleman, they say the same thing. I can't even heal a mosquito. When the reporter asked, Wow, well, you come to our great nation, are you going to heal many sick people? I can't even heal a mosquito. Then I was shocked. Actually, man cannot heal. It's God who heals. So when you are in the midst of the unclean lips, you are in the midst of proud people, when a man of God or when a servant of God comes up, God has used me to heal many sick people. Mm. I've laid hand on 10. 10 also get healed. If you have never known people who say man cannot heal a mosquito, you will think that's normal. That's a very good testimony. Because you and I dwell in the midst of the same culture. Do you get me? But if you are one like Isaiah, you have encountered God's holiness, then you, suddenly you hear this, what comes up from you? You will not judge. I guarantee you, you will not judge the servant of God. The true response from a person who knows God, his heart will be grieved. You know what is grief? His heart will be grieved. He wants to take the glory of God? That's not the God I know. I don't think, I don't think he's walking with God. You are not there to judge. You are not to judge the servant of God. You are not to judge the pastors. But there you go. If you live in the midst of unclean lips, midst of the people of unclean lips, you will never be able to tell who have unclean lips, who don't have unclean lips. 
Right? If you have God's presence, if you know God, God has done a work in your heart. What do I mean work, done a work in your heart? He has broken you. He has caused you to know without God, you can do nothing. You can't even preach. You can't even lead a song. You can do anything at all without God. When God has done that in your life, the moment someone opens a mouth and says something to glorify himself, you catch it. It grieves you. It grieves you. Why? The Holy Spirit is grieved as well. But if you are there judging, ha 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 ha, he's, this guy is so proud, you and him, same category. Before you say he's proud, you are also equally proud. Are you following me? It's not nice to hear, but if you don't hear it here, I do not know where you're going to hear it. If you don't like this message, you can don't come again. But I'm going to preach until I'm going to see a true bride of God arise in this land. I will preach until I will see the bride of God that the Holy Spirit will mold, will begin to work. What did the Bible say about the bride of Christ? He must, the bride of Christ must be spotless, without blemish. Am I right? Hello? Correct or not? Did, did God say that? The bride will be without blemish, spotless. If nobody is going to cooperate with the Holy Spirit and begin to say, begin to highlight all these blemishes and spots, we are not ready for what God wants to do. We can cry all we want, we can pray all we want. We are not awakened and we are not aligned with the purpose of God. So my brother and my sister, I would rather take the hard way. If you do not like my message tonight, it's okay if you don't come. I'm going to preach the word of God. If it hurts you tonight, I'm telling you, it hurts you for good. This is what Isaiah said. In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. Woe is me, I am undone. I am a man of unclean lips. I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. Just because everybody is doing it, I also am doing it. And I cannot tell. I cannot even feel when the Holy Spirit is grieved. Because I think it is alright. I think it is acceptable. Because every church is doing it and everybody is doing it. If you have that reasoning, if you have that argument, then come one day when Jesus says, many will say to me, then you do not have any excuse anymore. Because many will say to me, I've done this, I've done that. Amen. Amen. Are you following me? Hello? Amen. Hallelujah. We cannot tell. We cannot be grieved. I'm, I'm just giving a small example of pride. It can be envy when somebody says something. Immediately you detect envy in that. You know that he said that because of envy. What is your response? You are grieved. You know that there is this thing, there's this issue inside. There's a thing inside. But if you judge, you and I are equally the same. But if you detect that, that, you say, God needs to work in him. God needs to work in her. Amen. Amen. When we detect, when we see, it's not to judge. You will feel grief. You will see, you will say that God have mercy. It is time you build your church for God. Build your bride of God. Work in amongst your bride. You only return for a bride without spot, without blemish. Am I perfect? 100% no. I can tell you I was proud also. Sometimes I fell into pride as well. And I hate myself for that. And I better be honest with you. God is still dealing with me, even now. God is still dealing with me. To the extent I'm very ashamed to tell you. Can I say something? I tell God, God, it's been a long time I've not repented. Repentance is a lifestyle. I say, God, how can I miss out repentance? So it can be pride, it can be envy, it can be gossip, it can be anything. Why do we need to know this? So that you and I 
will not be part of the many. You and I will help others who are many to bring them to the right path. You and I can join the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit from eternity is working amongst the bride in this season until Jesus comes again. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. What caused this blindness? We must ask the right question, right? We got to ask the right question. Like we ask, why? Why they did not know? Then we say, oh, it could be blindness. And let's ask, what caused this blindness? Let's look at Matthew chapter seven, verses four to five. It's a very interesting verses here. If you have a go back, if you go back, go to your use your laptop or use your mobile phone. You just Google eh, this verse, Matthew chapter seven, verse four to five. People are very creative, you know. They draw cartoon. What is this, Matthew chapter 7, verse 4 and 5? How can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye, and look, a plank is in your own eye? Hypocrite! First remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. If you Google this, you will see the comic very interesting. You know, the, the eye has a big wood like that. <laughs> the big wood like that. And you point at the dust in, in the, another person's eye. People like to... People can... They just like to make it funny. You know, you have a big plank, one big piece of wood on your eye, and you want to take, and you want to remove the speck from your brother's eye. What caused the blindness? Can you see it now? What caused the blindness? Jesus said, hypocrite. Hypocrite. You have a big thing blinding your eye, and you don't see it. So what caused the blindness? I know cannot see it. So big the plane also cannot see. What caused the blindness? You want to know? Hidden motivation. Hidden motivation. You know, I don't know whether it's a Malaysian thing, it's a Chinese thing, it's an Indian thing or what. We always say what? Close one eye. Malaysian thing, huh? We just close one eye. No, never mind, huh? Let go, we let go, right? Do you, do you say close one eye? No, huh? When you close one eye, that's why you cannot see the plane. <laughs> Because the plank is so big, so you close one eye, I don't see, never mind. Huh? Let go, lah, let go, just close one eye. Lah. When you close one eye, you tolerate what is wrong, it shows us what is actually hidden inside us. Hidden motiva motivation, motivation within us that appears to be some right thing. What caused this blindness? What caused this blindness? Like I was, I remember now. I was discuss. I was talking to Brother Joseph last week after the meeting. He was telling me he was concerned with some people in the church and all that. What caused the blindness? What caused the blindness? I say, you know, in the first place, these people have hidden motivation in their hearts. What caused the blindness? Very easy. When something meets the hidden motivation in the heart, it becomes a plank that you cannot see. It blinds you. If some person go to a church because he or she like another person there in the church. So he's blinded. So when that person suddenly gets married, ooh, the, his whole world, world, he or she, her whole world goes upside down. Correct or not? Why? The hidden motivation. Why did he go there? Because of that. Right? So it shows when the person got married, oh, his whole world go upside down. He will blame the church, he will blame the aircon, he will blame the pastor, he will blame the carpet. But it's the hidden motivation. That's the negative thing. We, we laugh a lot about it. But there's also another side of it. If there are hidden motivation in us, so that's why, again, I'm not judging, okay? I'm just giving an example. That's why some churches, they dish out positions. You come to my church, I give you a position. Sure, you get stuck on. Not everybody, but those people who want position. Lah. You give Albert, Albert say, what lah, I've been a CEO, COO, CCC all so many years already. You give me position also, I don't want. COE, -E CO, whatever C I've done already. I'm a C sweet man. I'm an experienced C sweet man. So you go to church, hey, come lah, brother, I give you a, a, a you come, you come, I give, make you a leader. Blinded lah. So you accept the position. You don't care whatever the pastor say, whether the teaching is correct or wrong. Why? That blank blinds you. 
you have a hidden motivation. You want something from that place. That one becomes your plan. You say, it, it blinds you. It's a strategy. So that's why here we don't dish out position. <laughs> you don't need to get position here. Because we have a sea suit run so full of position already. I'm just kidding. Sorry, I give example. Am I correct? CEO or Chief Entertainment Officer. <laughs> <laughs> Am I correct? You have many C you have held many CE suit position before, right? So you're not you don't want already. But and I don't know. Some people after holding many positions they still want. They go to say, hey, how come they never make me a chief chairman? Another chief. Hey, how come they never make me a chief? Chief something lah. Just kidding, just making an example. What caused the blindness? There's something hidden inside you, the motivation which appears right. You know, I want to serve God, I want to do the right thing. <coughs> you know, I'm looking, uh, I want to look, I, I, I want to look for my husband or right? something that is right. But when it is something that is it becomes something perverted. It's perverted, it becomes you end up as a hypocrite. You go you go to church to look for a husband or wife. It's not wrong. But if that becomes the main thing, it, it, it becomes wrong. Correct. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So is it. You, do you regret coming tonight? <laughs> do you regret coming tonight? So you have this. So maybe you say, so how? Correct. Correct. I don't want to be blinded. I don't want to be blinded by the culture of the day. Everybody is so absorbed by themselves. Everybody is just thinking about themselves. Even Christian circle, even church, everything also is about self. But how to be promoted, how to be blessed, how to be prosperous, how to raise good family, how to have this. Outside, you also have this seminar. You just change it to Christian title, then you bring it in. Have you ever thought about anything about God? Amos chapter 7, verses 7 to 8. Don't misunderstand me. Many things are valid. Okay? God wants to bless us. Listen to me clearly. Many things are valid. But we got to get the main things right. We get got to get the priority right. Amen. 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 Amos chapter 7, verses 7 to 8. This is the time, this is the season that God is raising plumb line spokesperson again. I don't want to use the word plumb line prophets. Lah, eh? Then every one of us then we will be we will, we will be so hard up with the word, oh I'm a prophet, I'm a prophet. God is going to raise up plumb line spokesperson again. They will value the word of God. And when they receive revelation of the word of God as how it is in the word of God, they are going to say it out. Like I told you all just now, I'm going to say the real thing. If you do not like it, I'm, I cannot say I'm sorry right? because this is the truth. But if you cannot receive, I'm sorry, but I'm going to say it because this is the season. You know what's a plumb line? Nobody knows what's a plumb line. Let's say this is a thing, like, it's a heavy thing. Huh? Oh, good. <laughs> plumb line can be anything, but you tie a string here, if something is heavy, then it's a plumb line. People use it for construction, you see? Uh, if they build something, point. Huh? Point. Uh, if they build something, they'll bring this plumb line to the to the wall here. Hey, sang it on the wall. How to know sang it? If you have a plumb line. If you see like that, no, okay, wah. I see, huh? my eye very, my eye very good one. Oh, okay, wah. you see, the wall here looks okay, wah. you put a plumb line across the wall, you see, hey, oh, the wall, ah, wavy one, ah. a plumb line will tell you, oh, you see, Sister Chari is showing no. you, right? Uh, oh, man. Okay, <laughs> so you have Google it and see it. What does Amos chapter 7, verses 7 and 8 say? One, two, go, let's read together. One, two, go. Thus he showed me. Behold, the Lord stood on a wall, made with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. The Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I say, a plumb line. And the Lord said, Behold, I'm setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. 
I will not pass them, pass by them anymore. The standard of God must be preached again. The original, actual standard according to the full counsel of God's word must be preached again. We cannot tolerate compromise. We cannot tolerate, ah, yeah, never mind, la. it's just a sin. When, we, when you and I begin to take sin lightly, you begin to give a small room. Sikit, sikit, lama jadi bukit. Never mind, la. never mind. La. Sikit, sikit, lama, lama jadi bukit. God's standard as revealed in the whole council of the world. Amen. Are you following me? Remember, I told, I, I like, I always mention this verse, right? In Matthew chapter 34. Even the elect can be deceived, right? I always tell you, right? You, you know, can I remember? The yes. Bible says Matthew 34, even the end time, the elect, elect means Christians, right? can also be deceived. Correct, right? So how, how to do? How, what, what should I do? Am I to study? What, what, what do I do? Do I, do I have a plumb line? What do I do? Even the elect can be deceived. When I was waiting for my results many, many years ago, <laughs> many, many years ago, I had a chance to work in a bank as a cashier. So if you give me a stack of money, I know how to count that way. Maybe now no more lah. At that time, it was, it was just started the machine count, uh, counting. But my time, they just started so two cashiers share one of So now nobody learn that. No, no, you, nobody goes to the bank anymore. Right? You use machine already, right? right? So the last time, everybody they will give a stack, they will do like that. People who always deal with, I, I have some colleagues who have been cashier for a long time. Hui. Clever. Suddenly, ju -ju 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 -ju. counterfeit. I say, how do you know? How do you know? Every day, touch the money. This one, not real one. Ask the man, don't let him go out. It's an offense, you know, you cannot go counterfeit money. How, where do you get this from? He say, hey, I got it from another bank. I just withdraw from another bank. Do you know? <coughs> if I give you a stack, do you know? You don't know, right? You need more counting. Huh? You need more counting. <laughs> you heard the story before, not of a man who went to learn about. I think I told you all the story about. Went to learn about the precious stones. A young man wants to learn from a guru, a master, Sifu, who is very good, knows all about precious stones, right? So every day the person go and learn. When you go to work, you must learn first. I don't know how to work, right? Every day give him one stone to just touch. Until he got fed up. He said, I come here to work, you know, uncle. I'm not here to just touch a stone, you know. Okay, you're ready. Immediately he gives him, tell me real or false. Not real one. He's ready. What has he been doing? Every day he just sit there, Touch the real thing. You touch the real thing. Every day he comes, you sit there, 9 to 5, I give you this is real stone. You touch it. <sighs> First day, what? selfie. Second day, beefy. <laughs> Don't know what else. Third day, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Try everything. Still, uncle, I come here to work, you know. Not to touch stone, you know. <laughs> Change something, put here. <laughs> uncle, I come here to work, you know. Then give him a whole set. Now you tell me which one real, which one not. Naturally, he touch this one. False. Counterfeit. Counterfeit. If the elect can be deceived, how do I not fall into deception? Is not to learn about the counterfeit. Is to learn what is real. When you and I know what is real, you can tell what is counterfeit. When you have been always touching the real money, suddenly a fake money, you don't know it. 
if you know God, you will not be deceived. That's why your heart grieves. That's why your heart is grieved. When you see that, you see people you know, out there, they can talk about all the things out of pride. But the whole thousands of people, they listen and they do not even discern a hint of pride. That's why your heart is grieved. Why is your heart grieved? They do not know God. You know the real thing. Very easily you pick up what is not real. My brother, my sister, it will be very sad when you are in the midst of the people who are all doing the wrong things. You can't tell. You and I can't tell. You can't tell. It's the big church one. Got brand one. You know brand one. You better know what brand. It's a big church one. You know what they do or not? Why not? What's wrong? Do you know God or not? Can you tell? I'm not against any church. Okay? I'm not against any big church. I'm not against any servant of God. But it is time for us to grow up. It is time to be able to tell. To be the bride. To tell. If we cannot tell, surely the elect can be deceived. Huh? The reason the elect can be deceived is... I don't know what is real, what is wrong. But if you know God, you know God, just a touch, just a smell. You just look at the face. You just have, don't, you are not relying on yourself, you know. Because you know God, God will tell you. You will just know it. And there's nothing to be proud about it. Because the pride is in the humble, if I'm low, I go God. People do not know me, it's fine. And I know God, I can pick up. Not because I want to judge. I will not fall into deception. Not only I do not fall into deception, when the day comes, I will not be among the many. Many will say in the last days. Right? They were blinded. They were blinded. They did not know. Today, we have the blind light, plumb line set for all of us. It's very simple. Like I, what I said last week, it's very simple, my friends. Very simple. I never do it in a mysterious way. I just show you the wheel. Live from the center. Learn to live. What is the center? Know God. Seek God. Love God. You will be fine. You want to know God. Your whole focus is you want to know God. Seek Him. Love Him. You will be fine. At the right time, God use you in prophecy, God use you in miracles, God prosper you. For what? You know for the, for the purpose. All this will come. But if you get the focus right, you get it right, like Paul said, I want, I count everything lost except to know Jesus. Count everything lost. All I know, all the things I know, whatever, not the, even ministry, not even anointing, nothing counts. Everything is like done. Except the know Jesus. Except the know God. And, <coughs> and if we have bride here, because God called all of us to be bride, then you will begin to have a hunger inside you. I want to know this God. I want to know this God. I want to know this God. I don't know. I don't know this God. I mean, I've been a Christian 10 years, 10 years, 30 years. I know about anointing. I know about spiritual gift. I know about prophecy. I don't know God. Isn't that scary? I know about ministry. I know about this, about that. Do you know God? Depart from me. You practice lawlessness. Because you don't know God. Some preachers even use it more severely. They will be saying, you don't have intimacy with God. You only use God like a professional prostitute. God allows us to gather together. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The purpose of our gathering, we have brothers, we have sisters, 
we have spouses, some don't have, it's okay, God will give you a spouse. All this for one purpose. What is the purpose? We can help one another. Amen. Sometimes you and I, you see your brother, your sister, not only encourage them when they are down. If you see, hey, there's some spots, some blemish, we pray for them, we encourage them. It is painful sometimes. Sometimes your wife, your husband tell you, hey, hey this is not right. You don't like it, but inside you, you know, hey, it's God. You know. Hey, God is telling you. Sometimes our, when those who are married, eh, your spouse will say, hey, don't you think you're now a bit proud idea? Oh, hey, this one, that one. We don't like it, right? We don't like it. But deep inside you, you know it's true. When you know it's true, that's the purpose God placed you together. That's the purpose of gathering also. Not just for spouses, brother and sister. Our gathering is to sharpen one another. Amen. There's no competition here. We are all sharpening one another to be a company of bride. Everyone say Amen. 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 I end with this, okay? I go. 10 or 9. I end with this. Are you relieved to hear that? There are two types of arrows. In Ephesians chapter 6, uh, in a spiritual, what do you call it? The warfare, uh, the spiritual we weapon, right? Ephesians chapter 6, right? It's in verse 16, it says, Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one, right? The enemy always throw fiery arrows at Christians, right? You must have a shield. In Lamentations chapter 3, verses 12 to 13, God also has arrow. He has, in verse 12, he says, He has bent his bow, Lamentations chapter 3, verses 12 to 13. He has bent his bow and set me up as a target for the arrow. He has caused the arrows of his quiver to pierce my loins. My brother, my sister, there are two types of arrow. The enemy's arrow will come with lies. Will come with lies. All kinds of lies tell you you are not worthy, tell you Jesus does not love you. These are the one level of lies. Another level of life will say, oh, it's fine, everybody is doing it, don't worry, this is not a sin, it's okay. So all these are different, different levels of lies that the enemy always shoot fiery darts at the believers. So in Ephesians chapter 6, we are told to have the shield of faith. Is it how important it is? Faith, our belief in God. What kind of a God we believe in? The arrow. But at the same time, hello, at the same time, God also has arrows. Sometimes when you hear messages like tonight, sometimes my prayer is it becomes arrow in God's hand and may it be shot right inside us in Lamentations chapter 3 verses 12 to 13 to pierce inside us. It may cause pain to our flesh, but after the pain, there is the healing there is a deliverance. You become more like Jesus. There's less blemish. There's no spot inside us. What kind of arrows would you rather receive in your life? Would you like the arrow of God to be shot to you, pierce you, painful, break you? Or the arrows, the fiery arrows of the enemy? You may say some nice things. You may will puff up your ego, will make you feel good, will puff up your, will exalt yourself, some lines that tell you everything is okay, don't listen to all this. It's in all our choice. Amen? Amen. Shall we stand? Let's just pray. Okay. Let's close our eyes. Father, we thank you for tonight, for your word. We ask that from what we have heard, we may all of us be able to discern the love of God in the words of God. That you are not a God who is angry, but Lord, in the times and seasons we are living in, you love us, you want to prepare us, you want to mold us, you want to change us, you want to make us to become like you. <coughs> you love us so much that you do not want us, you do not want to leave us like how we are, oh God. Lord, I thank you for your word. Your word is precious. Your word is light unto our path. 
and to our souls, O oh Lord. We ask that what we have heard tonight will become like arrows in your hand, Lord. That these arrows will be shot deep inside us. Not to kill us, not to hurt us, not to cause pain inside us, but to set us free. <coughs> but to set us free to heal us and to deliver us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 